My name is Jim Wallace. Uh, here at Tsunami Skydivers, I'm what's referred to as a tandem master. I'm what's known as a tandem master, a certified tandem master. As a skydiver, we have to make a certain number of jumps, and then we go to a tandem certification course to learn all the ins and outs. You get to carry live passengers and enjoy the experience of skydiving for the first time with those people. I made my first jump in 1970, and I enjoyed it. It was something new and exciting and thrilling for me, but I didn't have a lot of money. I was trying to figure out a way that I could jump for free or get someone to pay for me. I couldn't find anybody to pay for me, so I became a skydiving instructor. The only way to jump back in those days was you had to do a static line, which is what our military does. It was more military oriented and so on. Then came along advanced free fall techniques and so on to where we are today. So now we can go up on our very first jump and do a 60 second free fall. I can't wait for them to open the door at altitude because I get to go out into the fresh air, clear view of the entire coastline, depending on where we're jumping and so on. And just sharing that experience with the passenger and, and opening the parachute and then the nice, peaceful, serene parachute descent down for a safe landing is difficult to describe. It's just, uh, I love it and I can't get enough of it. It's basically up to a point, cheap adrenaline. You, you, you virtually have to do it to appreciate how different it really is. Some people think they don't like either being on a roller coaster ride. An example would be you're on a roller, roller coaster on level ground, you take off and it starts an incline, you get heavy in the seat and then you go over the top, you get light in the seat, and some people don't like that feeling and so on. Others think it's like jumping off a rock into a, a body of water where you step off at zero forward speed and zero vertical. You come out of the aircraft, you're in a completely weightless environment. There's no sensation of falling. Once the parachute opens, at that time you feel the deceleration, the parachute opening and you're slowing down. And then it's like, wow, we were really going fast, but there's no sensation of falling. Then you get the peaceful euphoric ride down, gliding like a bird down for a safe landing. It's still, even though I tell people about it, they don't believe you until they do it. Therefore, I've been doing it now ever since and got all the United States Parachute Association instructional ratings, getting involved with some movies, doing stunt work and so on down the line. But uh, I was at the right place at the right time. The first movie I was involved with was the movie Navy Seals and uh, they needed some skydivers to be involved with that and I was chosen. And then we got the movie Point Break. The uh, producers, directors had seen what we had done on Navy SEALs, so our group got to be involved with uh, Point Break with uh, Patrick Swayze, Keanu Reeves, and so on. Went on to do a movie called Terminal Velocity with uh, Charlie Sheen and Natasha Kinski. Did Air Force One, did The Bucket List, did Iron Man 3, did some stuff on a few TV shows and so on, which involved skydiving. and. Um, as far as the acting thing and so on, I, I, my involvement has been being a stunt double whenever it comes to some skydiving scenes. Certainly not all of them. There are many talented skydivers who are involved in stunts. Still, there are some parts for some young men like myself here as, as we continue on. And it's just been a real pleasure to be involved with Hollywood on that, in that phase. I'd have to say <clears throat> probably a lot of crazy things that I've done, but one, one that kind of stands out to me, I was involved with a TV show called Hollywood's Greatest Stunts, where myself and a gentleman by the name of Kevin Donnelly were involved uh, jumping from one airplane to another. Uh, since then, a few people, uh, Travis Pastrana, I think is his name, has jumped, from, uh, jumped out of an airplane, got back in the same airplane, but myself and Kevin hold the world record, taking off in two separate airplanes, going to 16 to 18,000 feet. We wing walked out. They put the airplane into a nosedive. We jumped off, free fell over, grabbed to hold the opposite airplane. They leveled the airplane out. We wing walked back in and ended up coming back to the airport in a separate airplane. And that still stands as the Guinness Book of World Records. So that's pretty wild. Approaching an aircraft in free fall with the blade turning, wow, pretty exciting. I work down in San Diego with a company called Tactical Air Operations. Um, I'm a military freefall instructor. We teach the upcoming Navy SEALs uh, entry level skydiving skills. We do eight to 10 courses per year. They involve 16 day courses. And we take the guys from no jumps through full combat equipment in 25 jumps day and night. And so my life is pretty full of skydiving, which we truly enjoy. And thank goodness my wife is also a skydiver who allows me to continue uh, in what I truly like doing. I understand that, but if they truly knew how, how much safety, preparation, dedication goes into making a skydive, what appears to be a thrill-seeking thrill thing is really pretty tame by most standards. 
but usually what we hear, the bad news is, being a little selfish here, almost the only time we hear about skydiving on the news media is when there has been a fatality and or a plane crash, both of which happen not very often at all within the United States based on the number of people that jump every single day and, and every year. Therefore, generally speaking, skydiving gets a bad rap that, well, it's thrill seekers, they're crazy, they shouldn't be doing that, they're, they're taking extreme chances and so on. Once you get a taste for skydiving and an appreciation for everything that goes into making it safe, you'll quickly see that it is a very structured, very safe sport that offers rewards you can't find down here on earth, I guarantee that. It's hard to say, but my biggest challenge is to maintain a high level of safety and respect for what I do not take any more chances than are absolutely necessary, jump the safest equipment that I can, and as long as I personally can continue to skydiving for the United States Parachute Association here in the United States and worldwide, I wanna do it as long as I can be healthy and contribute and have fun. I get that question from a lot of people, including my skydiving buddies, going, what the hell are you still doing this for, Jim? <laughs> but when you have a passion for what you do, you have the physical ability and the mental capacity to continue to do it and make it safe, all the younger people coming up respect you, come to you for information, uh, want to hear about your experiences, and I feel that I'm a positive contribution. I don't have any plans on going fishing anytime soon. I'd have to say my biggest accomplishment is being involved with the world records. I've been involved with 11 world records, but those are accomplishments that I will take to my grave with me because they are so fantastic. Those of you out there that haven't stepped up to the plate, gone out to make a skydive, regardless of your age, almost regardless of your health, you should come out and try what we think is one of the greatest thrills known to man. It's a pleasure going with you on your skydive, so you have some idea of what I'm talking about.